everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are very excited today to have a special bonus episode where we are have returning guest, author Esther Hatch is here. And uh, we've had you on what, this is the third time or fourth time, third time, something like that? I think it's the third. Yeah. 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 So welcome to, uh, again to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. It's always fun. Yeah. So for people that maybe haven't listened to those previous episodes, uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit to our audience and uh, tell us about your upcoming, uh, you've got two books coming up. I do have two books coming up. Yes. Um, I have been writing for a couple of years now and I write pretty exclusively historical romance. Well, yes, that's all I've written so far. Uh (laughs) I've written in two time periods. I've written some Regency and lately I've focused more on the Victorian period, which is a little bit later. Um, Well, Queen Victoria was on the throne. Um, And so I do have two books coming out. They are both Victorian romances. Um, One actually just came out and it is called Manor for Sale, Baron Included. And that one is... Uh, what I tried to do is kind of mash up two genres of the rom-com and the historical romance. So it's got a cute, fun cover that's bright colors. um, So kind of a unique cover for a historical romance. And then just really tried to push the humor in that book and take it up to hopefully the next level. Yeah. 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 And then in May, if you want me to introduce my other one too, um, in May, I have um, A Proper Scoundrel coming out, which is the third book in my Proper Scandals series. And I'm really excited about that one too. It's um, going to be Lord Bryant's books. So if you've um, been following that series, uh, I think a lot of people have been looking forward to hearing his story. Yeah, it's going to be really good. There, are, We might have some mild spoilers if you're listening, uh, but we'll try to keep it pretty pretty tame as far as the 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 new books and everything and we'll have some spoilers for the old books but but nothing too bad so hopefully it'll inspire you to go and check out the books but uh so 2020 of course we're all in quarantine and everything and and how was that for you as a writer do you feel like it helped you as a writer or did, was it was it difficult I think all my writer friends with children, it was not very helpful. (laughs) I think (laughs) some of the ones who didn't have kids, I think they were like, well, I'm stuck at home. I can write. Um, But for me, we went through some phases of homeschooling the children. And I, when they did come home originally last year, um, I kind of just stopped writing for a while, but I had deadlines coming up. And so after a couple of weeks of just not writing and realizing, oh, my kids are not going back to school, even though we thought maybe they would, (laughs) I realized, oh, I have to figure out a way to work and teach my kids school. And, and we probably didn't do the best at it, but at least it, it actually did teach me to take and schedule out and carve out time for my writing. Whereas before I felt like I had always been doing it in nooks and crannies, if that makes sense, or only when kids were at school and I could totally have the house quiet and focused. So that was, I guess, a positive about it is it taught me to prioritize my time sometimes for writing because it had usually been something that I did when nothing else needed to be done, (laughs) if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's hard sometimes when you have, I I mean, I can imagine it's hard with kids to consciously put your own, uh, your own career and your own things that can be hard to put them, uh, put those things first, you know, like you, there's always the whole mom guilt thing is always tough. Yeah. And at some point, my kids just had to learn to do things, you know, their school, it's not mine. So, and I don't know that they did. We kind of had a rough year, but we we made it through. And I think it's a year of giving yourself some grace and Mm -hmm. realizing that not everything's going to be perfect in this scenario. And that that's fine. This book, uh, the manor for sale, Baron included. So this one you self-published and so what kind of inspired you to do that? And Uh, what was that experience like? Yeah. So I have a lot of friends who self-publish or indie publish Mm -hmm. and which is the same thing. Just people call it different ways. Um, but there, 
they were just pretty inspiring to me. They have to do so much work to get their books out. And then there's just, they have these thriving businesses built around these books that they're putting out. So I um, personally have always kind of wanted to do it like for throughout my career, but Mm -hmm. just didn't have the opportunity until now. And even (laughs) as it came closer and as I was writing the book, there was a large part of me that just wanted to send it to my publisher and not have to learn all the things, all the aspects of self-publishing. And the reason I didn't though, um, is because I had actually talked to my cover artist before really getting too far into the book. Like I had the basic kind of outline, but I hadn't written a ton. Um, and she sent me back this cover and it's perfect. Like it's, just so like, it's exactly what I was hoping to put on the cover. And because I had that cover, I just thought, no, I have to keep going down this path because Uh my publisher chooses my covers, you know, if I had submitted to them and, um, which they have done an amazing job on, but after seeing this one, I just, I really felt like, no, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to use that cover and we're going to see what happens. Like, I do feel like this historical rom-com type, um, book is kind of on the cusp of maybe becoming a thing. And I, I'm excited to be at the beginning of it. So I think that was another advantage is, um, with self-publishing, like I finished the book, edited the book, and then it was out. Whereas like with trad publishing, um, it takes probably, I mean, at least a year from the time I turn it into them usually. And, and, and there's a lot of editing that goes on throughout that year and things, but, but I, I just felt the need to get this one out sooner and be mm-hmm. kind of at the beginning of this. Yeah. I think what's going to be kind of a new, new type genre in the historical romance. I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I might be one of the only ones. There are a couple others that do it, but mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed it. It's interesting to hear what you're saying because we just had not too long ago had Jenny Hale on the podcast. She's an author and she just started her own p- publishing entity, she called it. Yeah. And uh, so it's interesting to see the way the different people are able to get their uh, their works out there and be able to have more autonomy uh, in their, uh, in as, as authors. And, uh, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. And I'm excited to do both. I feel like there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's, it's been fun to learn like the advantages yeah. of doing it myself. And then, um, and there's definitely some disadvantages too, which is mostly just, I had a lot to learn. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of work. It actually is a lot of work. So mm-hmm. We just want to take a break from the show just to have a little check-in before we go on in the show. So we actually want to talk about our sponsor for this week, um, BetterHelp. Uh, In 2021, it's definitely okay to talk about your mental health, about your happiness. Humans aren't meant to keep everything inside. It can make us sick and therapy helps. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now. Maybe you need some tools to help. Maybe you've got stress, insecurity, problems in your relationship, um, are not not dealing well with things going on in your life. And that's what therapy can be. And whatever you need, don't be ashamed because normal humans struggle and they start to feel better and that's okay. It's good to start to feel better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers you video, phone, or a live chat session with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. The good thing is BetterHelp is much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. See if it's for you because you are your greatest asset. So this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Hallmarkies Podcasts. And listeners can get 10% off of their first month of better at betterhelp.com slash Hallmarkies. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash Hallmarkies. Yeah, well, I really enjoyed the book and I have been really struggling in 
in 2020 and, and onward uh, with having the motivation to read. And I don't know why uh, the, there's something about this time just makes me have a hard time staying focused. I feel like I'm getting distracted whenever I sit down to read. I have a million things that... <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I just have to like turn off my phone and turn off everything. And, and I've always had all those distractions and been able to read, but for some reason, I just feel like every time I sit down to read, something happens and I have to do, <laughs> deal with it. I don't know if you felt that way at all reading when you, um, I actually have like, yeah. it's been like a rough <laughs> patch for me for <laughs> a year. And I think part of it comes from writing as weird as that is like, because I used to, I feel like that used to be a huge part of my identity was I was a reader. Yeah. And I think a lot of writers always have felt like writers, but I've never felt like a writer until four years ago or so. And so to reading has kind of lost a teeny bit of its magic for me, which is so sad to me, but like, it's, it's now like part of my work. And so sometimes it, it does almost feel like work and it never felt like work before it was always fun. <laughs> so, so I think that's part of it for me too, is just like this feeling of, um, Oh, I need to read that book. I need to read that book versus like, yeah, um, like well, I'm just relaxing. And also just writing has taken up yeah. what used to be my leisure time. Like I, yeah. so I, I just feel like I don't have as much time to read anymore. So, yeah, that's, just, it's true. I mean, most of my leisure time is now taken up with things involving the podcast, whether it's watching something that then I cover on the podcast or, uh, or editing, or, you know, just, there's so many parts of the podcast that people don't understand that take so much time, like making thumbnail art or, you know, that most people see and are like, Oh, that that's nothing. No, it takes quite a bit of time. <laughs> it, I've done some things like that. And I, I agree. And like, I work for hours a day without getting any writing done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I just, it's interesting. Yeah. It's just yeah. interesting, but I do think it comes with the territory of having a job you love. Like, right. I, yeah. like, I think I see you passionate about your podcast and wanting to make it grow. And I, I feel like I could not do so much work, but I do enjoy it. And yeah. it has That's taken some true. of my leisure time because it's what I want to do in my leisure time. Yeah. So, well, and, and, and the thing about last year was that the stuff I had in my life that kind of took me away from the podcast were all taken away from me, things like swimming or going to church or, you know, those kinds of things, they were taken away. And so then it became even, I, I was already at like 80, 20. And then now, <laughs> Now it's yeah. like a hundred percent. Yep. But hopefully that will start to change a little bit. Uh, uh, w- today recording, I'm actually getting my first COVID dose today. So it's very Yay. exciting. <laughs> that is, Yay. that is very exciting. <laughs> well, the world will be open to you again soon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying though, about identifying yourself as a reader, because that was me for sure that I mean, I've always loved movies, uh, but, uh, uh, but I, I, I think I, I don't know if I would have identified myself as a reader first, but it was definitely part of my identity. And, and I think that it's, I don't know, like I used to, I used to read every single year, all, uh, all of the Jane Austens I would go yeah. through and I would read. And I haven't done that for so long. I used to do NaNoWriMo every year. That was kind of part of my identity. And I haven't done that in a while. And so I don't know. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, so, but anyway, the book I really enjoyed. I thought it was very dishy. And I think that you do a very good job creating sort of swoon worthy characters and situations that, that are very fun. Thank you. It was, it was a really fun book to write because my main goal was, I mean, it was also stressful, but like my main goal was to make it humorous. And of course, yeah. always for me, the romance is a huge part of what I want in a book. That's super important to me, but, um, but it did kind of, 
it was fun to just brainstorm like, okay, what's something funny that could happen? What's a funny setting for this yeah. to happen? What, what's a funny word? Like sometimes <laughs> like uh, there's one particular scene. Um, and again, I don't know how I, it, I wouldn't call it a spoiler exactly, but there's a squirrel involved yeah. and I, brainstormed what animal to use for quite a long time before I settled on squirrel being the funniest option. Yeah, um, it was very so good. It's, yeah. It's just, it's stuff like that. That was, it was fun to focus on how do I put the right phrasing in? How do I make this situation more funny? And the tricky thing about humor is making it funny and believable and um, natural. I don't, I don't know. How, like, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And so I hope I pulled that off. I think you did. <laughs> and it's not I was easy to do. So had you ever heard of the word pugil pugilist? I had. Yes. Okay. And that's another word that I also like, it's funny because it, I'm like what you would call a pantser when I write, uh -huh. which means I don't have my outline all set up. So Pugilist was another word that I was like, I need this guy to come up with a fake career for someone, but I need it to sound funny. And, um, so, I had never heard of it. I had to look it up. I was like, yeah. what is this? What does this mean? <laughs> I think it's actually going to become a more well known term. It's basically a term for a boxer. Um, now that Bridgerton is out and he, I think they use the oh, term. Oh yeah. In it. He boxes. I know, but I, I assume they're using that phrase. I'm not sure, but, um, yeah. So it literally then, um, shaped my whole, uh, book actually that I yeah. thought that was a funny word, <laughs> which is just funny to me that that is literally how I, um, then formed his character almost off of what's a really funny word that I yeah. could come up with that he could pretend to be. Right. Yeah. It was really funny. And so basically you have this woman who has uh, independent means. She has sold her grandfather's fabric company, right? Yeah. Correct. And yes. so she and her and the estate that she had in order to get a country estate so that her sister, who's in a wheelchair, can get out in the country and uh, get her. She's been too confined. And so she's very concerned about that. And it, she ends up buying the estate of a Lord Farnsworth who uh is not happy about the fact he had to sell his state and uh, so he ends up living uh in the hunter's lodge yeah on the estate and so at first they do not get along <laughs> at all of course and i he but he decides that in order to get his estate back he's going to try to woo her he's going to try to so that he can get it back so he starts out with kind of questionable not kind of <laughs> with questionable uh motivation and i was just wondering was it hard to kind of keep the character likable when he's out to you know sort of seduce the uh the lead character yeah that's a really good question and the funny thing is throughout this book, he was actually really easy to keep likable. Um, I think because he plays the kind of clueless and you, you're kind of rooting for him to get the manner back when you kind of realize the history of it. Um, I felt like he was easy to keep likable. She was harder for me wow. actually, because she was kind of standoffish, right? Like she's like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Which is natural. I mean, he's, he keeps coming around. And so I actually did a whole edit where she originally was very like in her mind, like not necessarily what she said, but in her mind, always kind of critical of him. Cause that's how I wrote it originally. And just, yeah. um, and I had a couple, we call them beta readers. So people who be, read the book before it's finalized. And they were just like, I don't get why she likes him. I don't get 
why, like she's been complaining about him the whole time. And then suddenly now she's sad that he's leaving. Like, I don't get it. Like, mm-hmm. so I had to do like a, a whole rewrite on her character a little bit to um, make her softer and more likable, which is funny because um, I didn't think that would be a problem, but it's funny how the, and, and I really actually mm-hmm. was worried about him being likable in this scenario but I think when it's a comedy, for some reason that takes the edge off of it. I think if it had been a drama, I, I think that might've been a harder issue to tackle, but I think in a comedy where he's kind of a bumbling little, not little, but like, I don't know, just, yeah. and it, it's endearing. I think the way he went about it, I felt like was kind of endearing, even though you knew he was mostly after the house. He actually really did like her. Um, yeah, from pretty much the beginning. He yes, was smitten, and uh, and he's he's almost sort of Hugh Grantish, I would say. In I in can this, see that. Yeah. yeah, kind of just charming and a little bit, a little bit foppish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah, and so there's a scene where he is swimming in the pond (laughs) and I was just curious if that was sort of inspired by the famous swimming scene in Pride and Prejudice 1995 100% yes 100% I was thinking about that scene and I was like I need a wet hero and I need him swimming in a lake And I actually read it originally as a lake. And then my editor, after reading all through it, she was like, you keep saying it's a lake, but what you're describing is a pond. So (laughs) we changed it to pond, Mm. which makes me feel a little bit like, oh, everybody calls it the Darcy Lake scene. Mine's a pond scene. So that's okay. But yeah, I mean, it was 100%. I wanted, like, I was trying to throw them. So that's their first meeting at her manor. She had no clue he would be anywhere near it. And there, and I wanted their first meeting to be funny and awkward. And yeah, I was like, well, I just, I need to get him in that pond. And so, yeah, it was, it, it was yeah. like, I would say a hundred percent. I wouldn't, I, it's a very different scene from that one. Yeah. But I just, that imagery of your main man swimming I just I was like yeah I I want to put that in my book so I did and yeah it it was funny and I thought that I probably will only get to do that once yeah well especially because it starts out as her pond and then his pond and then it's our pond (laughs) yes yeah so it is it it turns out to be like a really funny thing that's just how my brain works I'm like like I said, I'm a pantser. So my idea yeah. was like, I would love to do a, a lake scene, like in the movie version of Pride and Prejudice. And, and then like, suddenly that is now all incorporated into the plot where they actually both own that pond. And there's, that's where the division of the line is, is right down the middle of it. They share it. Yeah. So. Well, I really also liked when she gives him the hideous face yes that was really good because he had given her a gift and, <laughs> and so he was as a welcome or whatever so then she feels like she needs to get a gift and she gets this she had purchased this horrible vase and her sister hates it and this is doesn't want anything to do with it so she's like well i can i could give this to <laughs> because he she is kind of a sort of a joke to her but also like an excuse for her to see him yes like, secretly like she doesn't want to admit it that, that that's why but i don't know that was hilarious i really enjoyed that that was one of my last scenes i wrote actually oh, really? it's, it's funny how book writing goes where i was talking about how i needed her to come up, come off as softer and to come part way to him. You know uh, what I mean? Like, yeah. like there was a lot of him coming to her and she was standing off ish the whole time. So it was, um, it was good. Yeah. As I thought through what I could do to have her show that she actually is interested in him, you know, that like when she realizes she has this horrible thing and needs to get rid of it, he's the person <laughs> she thinks of. And yeah. it, 
delights her that she's going to be able to return this awful gift. And so I, I, I really love that scene for that reason, as I think it, it just was finally a chance, um, for her to move towards him. And I loved like his, like when he sees her coming, he doesn't see her, but here's yeah. he's, he's coming and she has a present for him and he's so excited <laughs> he's like, and it's what? not you this? quite what he was expecting so yes. yeah and the the whole thing with the boxing was very fun first of all him teaching victoria was very sweet and and then yeah, that, the- that was actually another thing as i it's funny you're bringing up all these ideas of when I was writing the book and I wanted him to have a relationship with Victoria, but it was very difficult for me to think of something he could do with her that would not be creepy. Like she's right. 13 years old and like I'd established that he likes to swim, but I was like, oh no, that it can't be swimming. That would be not good. And, um, and they've got the gardener there with them. It's not like they're ever alone, but uh, it's just funny how like long it took me to realize, oh, like at the very beginning, I talked about how he did box as a young child. And I'm like, of course, boxing is actually the perfect thing, the perfect thing for them to do that um, is fun. Like it's outgoing. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's something that will give Victoria confidence. Um, it's kind of out of the box and it just, it worked out no pun intended with the box. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it just kind of, it worked out brilliantly. And, um, yeah, it's just funny how things like that work when you're writing a book where after thinking about it for a week of what, what activity can these guys do? And then to be like, Oh, of course, (laughs) of course, boxing. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So I'm curious, do you have, does your husband read your, book. So what does he think of like these swoon worthy scenes that you write? <laughs> he does read them. Yes. Um, <laughs> he usually reads them on airplanes, which is my favorite thing. Cause I just <laughs> love this picture of my husband working on a business trip with a romance novel yeah. in his as he's flying. <laughs> around. So he's a little bit behind though, because he hasn't been traveling for work. Um, so he hasn't read this one yet, but he, he's impressed. Like, I I don't know, like, it's really nice when he reads them and comes home and he says, you know what, this, he did a really good job. I don't think he's threatened at all. (laughs) I, I I think like, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. And it's fun when he reads them. I like, I like hearing what he thinks and we will brainstorm together sometimes and, Mm -hmm. and things. So it's, it's fun to have a husband that enjoys that I'm doing this. It, it does interfere with family time sometimes. And that's a struggle. I'm not going to lie, but like the overall yeah. feelings are ones of positivity and that's great. And, and, and it's great. And I love that he reads them. I don't want to force him to read them because I know, you know, he reads like one or two books a year. He's not a big reader. He likes to read, but he's just busy. And, and right. so I'm always like, yeah, if now you have to up it to four books a year and two of them have to be <laughs> romance novels. Sorry. <laughs> so, but yeah. He's, he's like, wow, good. they're very romantic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And the, especially people will know when they read it, but the scene in the library, uh, the, the, that whole, that whole scene is so good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's so good. Uh, that one was good to write too. Like it felt, it came together really well. And, um, especially once I had kind of done the rewrite with her character. Um, and yeah, it was, I like, I I like that it was so poignant. Yeah. Yeah. What's nice is cause you really get in this book to get to know both the, both of the romantic leads. It's not just, from Sally's perspective, it's from, it alternates back and forth. Yeah. So you really feel like you get to know both of them, which makes that moment, uh, all the more meaningful. And you're like, Oh, then, then they make him wait. He makes her wait a whole year. (laughs) (laughs) I hate when, I hate when movies do that. Um, my, my sister just read it and I also like to watch Korean dramas and Mm -hmm. that's, pretty common thing that you have kind of at the end and 
so she was like, you pulled off the thing without making it awful. And I'm like, yeah, that's because in this time period, it really would have been inappropriate for them to have contact, you know, right. like, unless they were engaged or something. And so, but like in these Korean dramas, they'll do stuff like that and not write and not text for like a year. And I'm like, uh, no, that's <laughs> not normal. That's not love. So yeah. yeah, but they both had some growing to do. So it was mostly him. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, but then her, her as well, because she had to, had to learn to let her guard down a little bit after yeah. she had, uh, she thought that all barons are a certain way she had these sort of prejudices about uh about people like uh, lord farnsworth because of her previous relationship yeah and, and uh, even because of her father mm -hmm. yeah well i really enjoyed it i thought it was very fun and uh, so i am looking forward to though the next book in the proper series very much proper scoundrel so if people don't know it started out with a proper scandal which is 2019 and this was grace trying to get husband because she's she's living with her uh, cousins is that right yeah her yeah. well yeah her her aunt and her uncle, uncle. Yeah. and they're terrible so she needs she needs a way out and so she decides she's going to find a husband and this one that one had a big twist so it's a really did. fun yeah. way to start start the series i think yeah 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 i like uh, that was fun i don't think i have any other big twists in my books but, but i mean little ones maybe well, I would that's say. good because they have to be earned it has to work yeah like, you don't want to feel like you have to put a twist in to every that's story right. yeah yeah. And I worried about it with a proper charade, which yeah. is the second one in that series. Cause I was worried after reading the first, everyone would be expecting it. And so right. I was nervous when that book came out, I was nervous that, um, people wouldn't like it as much, but I actually think it's been even better received. Yeah. Than yeah you don't want to become the M night Shyamalan of romance. I know. <laughs> and I love his movies. I really do. But it's like, you can't not look for what the twist is going to be. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's the whole movie and you're expecting it. But those first one or two was like, wow, these are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so then the proper charade is about patience and she uh, disguises herself as a maid uh, yeah. to, or to get to prove to her brother that she's not a weak woman and, uh, and it then ends up uh, ends up getting into trouble when she falls yeah. for the uh the head of the household that she is working for so that one's really fun i enjoyed that and yeah, that one's a little bit of a romantic comedy too i uh -huh. think um not maybe quite as well i i would almost classify it that it's not marketed that way like i have marketed <clears throat> manner for sale baron included but um yeah it's to me, there, when there's a level of ridiculousness in the scenario, like I feel like that, and if you could, it has to be pulled off in the right way, but, <laughs> but that one definitely has some ridiculous stuff going on in it, but it's fun. It's just mm -hmm. fun. That's great. And so then we have coming up a proper scoundrel. Yes. And so this one is about Lord Bryant, who's been a character in the previous two, two, uh, books. And so that's exciting. It's really exciting. I feel like his story has been in my head for, I mean, two years and two or three, I don't know when I started writing a proper scandal, but, um, it just, there was something about finishing that book that was very different than any of the others. Yeah. And I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Like I'll, all my other books, I, wait until and I see how they're received and then I'm proud of them <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but like this one I'm like I do not care what people oh, think man. about it and I think they're gonna love it but um but I'm proud of what I wrote it was it was a lot of work and mm -hmm. there's a lot of deep feelings in that book it's still funny but 
there's also a lot of emotional issues to work with yeah. through for um Lord Bryant. So is it hard was, writing two yeah. stories at the same time? So that's I didn't I didn't write them at the same time. Um I actually wrote a proper scoundrel first. It's just oh, okay. this this is what I was talking about with the time yeah. frame being so different in traditional versus indie. Um <clears throat> yeah, I finished a proper scoundrel and then I started writing manner for sale baron included but manner for sale baron included is already out and the proper scoundrel everybody's still waiting for in may right so, right yeah well we're looking forward to it it's going to be a lot of fun i look forward to reading it and congratulations on both books that's an incredible accomplishment yeah it's it's been really fun well we'll have links in the description if you want to check out the books uh use you can use our affiliate links we sure appreciate that and uh so if people want to follow you on social media how can they do that yeah um i'm on instagram and facebook as author esther hatch if you type that in you'll find me i have a webpage estherhatch.com and on there you can subscribe to my newsletter if you're interested in getting news from me I love newsletter subscribers and followers. So um, yeah, that'd be great if anyone's interested. Yeah, make sure to check that out. And yeah, you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Round Tomatoes. And I'll also put my Goodreads account link in the description if people want to follow me on there, see what I'm reading. That would be fun. And uh, thank you again so much for coming and make sure you're all following the podcast to Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We have our patron group and merch store. Check that out. And thanks so much, Esther. This was a lot of fun to get to talk with you. And again, congratulations on the books. It's great. Thank you, Rachel. All right. I'll, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye everyone. Bye.